You see that thing? Like, it's like the sun. Drums. User manual, hooks, <laughs> look at that thing. Let's get that out of frame. It feels super solid. I've heard some people say it feels flimsy, but I don't think it feels flimsy. Like this is a pretty robust reflector. I don't know how robust reflectors need to be, but this seems like tape on my finger. I don't want tape on my finger. This seems robust. It's got lots of LEDs on there. This thing looks beautiful, I think. Uh, the LEDs are just right here. Like there's no glass here to protect the LEDs, which may or may not be a good thing. Um, but the, these are what they call SMD or surface mounted devices where it means the LEDs, there's no wires, they're just soldered directly to the board. Now before I turn this on, we need to talk about a few of the numbers and words that we need to understand to properly evaluate an LED light. This is the Mars Hydro TS-1000, it is a full spectrum light. You've heard the word PAR, PAR means photosynthetically active radiation. The wavelengths of light that a plant can use to cause photosynthesis to cause photosynthesis to occur. Um, that happens primarily in the blues and the reds, but the plant still uses the greens, which is why a full spectrum light is better than a blue light or a red light or those blurple lights you see. And by the way, blurple, I think, is a stupid, stupid word. I do not like the word blurple. So, heavens, whoever came up with that. Full spectrum light, meaning that it has all of the colors of the rainbow within one with when within one light, whitish light, just like the sun. Now we understand what color light is coming out, what color photons are being produced, what wavelength of light is coming, is being emitted from the light source. We need to understand how much is being emitted. That's the PPF, that's the photosynth photosynthetic photon flux, meaning over a given period of time, how many photons are being emitted from the light source. Um, that's measured in micromoles. That does not tell you how much is actually hitting the plant or hitting the surface, that just tells you how much is being emitted. Because as everybody on YouTube loves to say, they love this, they love the word inverse square law. So as you move away from a light source or any energy source, every time you double the distance, the amount of energy striking the surface or hitting, passing through a certain space is cut in four. Does that make sense? So if you're at one unit, and then you go to two units, you don't have half as much light hitting the surface, you have one fourth as much light hitting the surface. So that's why light placement is very important when you are placing your light. We call that PPFD, that's the photosynthetic photon flux density. How many of these photons that are being emitted are hitting the actual surface that we are trying to illuminate? In this case, it would be the plant leaves, the canopy, as you, if you will. So those, those, are the, those are the words. Those are the words we need to understand. PAR, the color of light is being produced. PPF, the rate at which the light is being produced, the photons are coming out. And PPFD, the density at which the photons are falling on a surface. Okay, for this light, at 18 inches, we are looking at 780 micromoles right in the center. Now as it gets to the edges, you fall off at about 250 to 160 micromoles around the edges. So, you know, as you would expect, most of the lights right in the middle dissipates as it goes out. The question I have, though, is like, that's super neat. Is that good enough for what I'm growing? Like, if I'm growing lettuce, 
and I did a little bit of research, and from what I've read, lettuce grows optimally with about 200 micromoles. Uh, and tomatoes, to grow a tomato, it looks it likes about four to 600 micromoles. And that's, I couldn't find a ton of information on that. I tried to look for studies and things like that, but that's the best I could find. And I'll put those sources in the links below, probably if I remember when I published the video. Last thing, before we turn this light on, we're gonna talk about efficacy, the PPE. How well does this light take electricity from the wall and turn it into photons that the plant can use? And this one is rated at 2.35 micromoles per joule. Now a watt, you've heard of watts, draws 150 watts. A watt is a joule per second, so this will produce 2.35 micromoles per one of those joules that's coming in per second. Um, so you're thinking to yourself, is that good or bad? I, from what I've read and from what I've seen, that's probably optimistic. Uh, probably looking closer to 1.8, between 1.5 and 2. But I don't have a th way to measure that myself, so I just have to trust what others have said. So the manufacturer says 2.3. Others have measured it a little bit lower than that, but that's still very good. This is a 100 to $150 light. I looked at some of the more expensive lights to see what their efficacy rating was, and they claim high threes. Now, you can, push, you can push the LEDs a little harder if you can cool them better, right? And not burn them out, not shorten their lives. This just has the reflector as the heat sink. So I suspect that that's part of the reason they can't push them harder. Once you start adding fans and active cooling, all those things, you're adding to the cost, which makes, pushes it out of the $130 range. So I think this thing is very efficient for what it is doing. So let's turn this thing on. Should we turn this thing on now? Enough fooling around. We know what color the light is, full spectrum. We know that it has an average efficacy of 2.35 micromoles per joule. We know that it claims that it's hitting 700 and whatever micromoles in the middle of the, of the table at 18 inches. Um, and we know that we can grow a tomato plant with 600 of those micromoles, between four and 600, and lettuce. Yeah, you can grow lettuce with 200. So yeah, maybe you could put like lettuce around the edges and like a pepper in the middle or something. I think maybe that's what I'll do. Um, anyway, let's plug it in. Let's check it out. No. Standard computer style power cord. <clears throat> now it doesn't look like you could daisy chain these, and I don't think you can daisy chain them. And it doesn't look like there's an on off switch, it's just the power cord. There's no bloom or veg state, it's just on, it is what it is. And this looks like it goes in here. Whoa. Whoa, that is luminous, that is bright, that is blinding. My heavens, can you even see how bright that is? You see how bright that is? Let's see if we can figure out how this dimmer works. Like a little rubber plug or something. I don't know what to do with that. I didn't want to have to resort to this screwdriver. Remove silicone plug, adjust with screwdriver. Use multimeter to detect actual power. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I grow like lettuce for fun. I'm not, I don't want to measure anything. All right, so I got a regular screwdriver here. I'm gonna jam it. I'm gonna jam a screwdriver into the back of this power supply and probably not get shocked. Whoa, -ho. look at that. So it says it goes between 25 and 100%. It may or may not be linear. I'm gonna put it back on 100. You see that thing? Like, it's like the sun. Let's do some tests. Okay, ridiculous test one. Now it's pretty dark out here. It's almost 10 o'clock. But as you can see, the camera shows it completely dark. Now to plug this thing in. Whoa. That lights up my entire yard quite well quite well. Let's see what it looks like in my living room. Yeah, it's like the sun came out. All right, sun test, here we go. Put my phone in the sun, 438,394, 16,000 in the shade. Now, put my phone in the light. If I put it right next to it, the best I can do is 95,000, so not even close to as bright as the sun. Still freaking bright light though. Okay, those were stupid tests. Like, of course it's not as bright as the sun, but it was interesting to see how much percentage of the sun it actually is bright. Does that make sense? Is that a, is that a sentence? 
Uh, it lights up my living room fairly well. It lights up my backyard pretty well when it's completely dark outside. But what I really want to know is I've read all the numbers, I've read all the specs. Will it grow a freaking pepper? That's what I want to know. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to next time, in my next video, I'm going to hang this light. I'm going to set up the ebb and flow container. I'm going to plant a pepper in the middle, something that flowers for fruit. I'm going to plant chamomile, kind of a little bit away from that, something that flowers for flowering sake. And I'm going to plant on the peripheries where there's not quite as much light, plants that don't need as much light, like peppermint. And I can get myself some peppers and some herbal tea, which sounds amazing to me. Maybe not at the same time, but I do want both of those things. Um, so, thank you so much Mars Hydro for sending me this. It seems like a solid, solidly constructed light. I don't care, I mean, it is, it is a budget light, so you're not gonna find some of the features you see on some of the more higher, on the higher end lights, passively cooled, no fan. The dimmer is octave, awkward, but I don't care because I'm not gonna be changing the brightness very often. I don't care that it doesn't daisy chain because I only need one. I don't care that there's no on off switch because I use timers for the lights. Um, I don't know, it just seems like a nice plug and play, budget friendly light. So I will try it out, I'll let you know. Stay tuned, I'll probably give it away in a couple months. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. And thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, whatever it is you do. Share with your buddies, friends, mom. Share with your mom. Have you ever shared one of my videos with your mom? Is your mom into hydroponics? Anyway, that's enough rambling. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.